Like no other year in recent memory, 2020 has had us in our home, holding our equipment, wondering where we should take it when things are a bit more normal. Not to be kept entirely in one place, Raymond and I have ventured out of these four walls for a few safe road trips, but definitely not our normal definition of getting here, there, and everywhere. Now, when one sits holding a camera and lens for a long time, quietly by oneself, strange things can happen. <laughs> for us, that has been connecting dots between what you can do with a camera body like this and a lens originally designed for an entirely different system like this one. Today, a roundup of what we've done so far, mixing different camera bodies and lenses across brands, how to do it, why you can, and why to perhaps give it a shot. But first, members don't miss this week's members only video where I answered a member's question about changing lenses and I discussed a few pieces of gear that I have for testing. Members, there is a link in the description of this video to see that. There is also a link for anyone who is interested in learning more about channel membership. Members see those exclusive weekly videos, the long form photography courses, they get access to a special email address so that I can get back to them more quickly and more. But before you go do that, back to this video. Let's talk about why it seems to be more popular than ever to mix brands of bodies and lenses. For one, mirrorless cameras tend to have a much shorter flange distance than their DSLR ancestors. That's the distance from the sensor of the camera to the lens mount. Without the mirror and with the increasing consumer desire for smaller equipment, the latest mounts have been designed to optimize space. When adapting an older DSLR lens, it's easy to add space like this. What this means is that as long as someone designs an adapter to bridge the gap from here to here, a lens designed for a system with a longer flange distance will generally be able to be adapted to a system with a shorter flange distance. This allows with an intermediary like this, virtually any DSLR lens to be made to work with virtually any modern mirrorless camera. Also, the famous Leica M mount has a longer flange distance than most mirrorless standards, putting the legacy of M mount lenses in play as well. Some conversions are easier than others. Going from Nikon's own F mount to their Z mount requires this chunky adapter made by Nikon themselves, and it passes electronic information across and allows autofocus with many F mount lenses. This TechArt Sony mirrorless E mount to Nikon Z mount adapter is a different story. The flange distance between these two standards is very slight, requiring TechArt to create a clever design that moves the electronics out of the plane of the adapter itself and making for a super tight fit overall. And they did this with autofocus and exposure control. One thing we have enjoyed with this adapter is using the modern legend of a lens, the Sony 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master, on our Nikon Z7 for astrophotography and other photos that just make us feel like we're beating the system a little bit <laughs> by combining a great body and a phenomenal lens across brand standards. When it comes to the small size but ambitious cross-brand capability, the, this TechArt is definitely the most ambitious adapter that we own, but there's more. We purchased adapters that allow us to use Nikon F-mount lenses on Fuji X system cameras, and another for Leica L-mount cameras like this Leica SL2 that we shouldn't have purchased, but did anyway. A couple things about the Fuji adapter. One, we don't actually own any interchangeable lens Fujifilm body, but we borrow them often enough to justify the relatively inexpensive adapter. And two, it has aperture control, not through electronic means, but you can actually set the aperture here on the adapter manually and it will stop down the lens while you are metering. Using mirrorless and seeing the live sensor readout in the electronic viewfinder as you're making adjustments makes this all but seamless. Our Nikon F mount lens to L mount adapter is simply an adapter to change form factor from one mount to the other. If you're working with an older lens with manual exposure control on the lens, no problem. If you are shooting with one of Nikon's G lenses, you're shooting wide open. Depending on the lens, this may be no problem or 
it may be a reason not to use that particular lens on this adapter. On to our very inexpensive Leica M mount adapters. This is getting M mount lenses, many of which have no electrical contacts whatsoever, onto modern mirrorless marbles. We've got M to Sony E. The Sony Alpha 7 R4 handles these extremely well. Focus confirmation with highlights in the viewfinder, set aperture priority for the easiest flow, turn the aperture ring, set the focus, and you're firing away. Not as fast as autofocus, but this isn't about speed. This is about using this on this. And we don't own one, but TechArt actually has an M mount to Sony adapter that cleverly moves the M mount lens in and out on the adapter, giving you autofocus on M mount lenses that were never designed for autofocus. And M to L. We don't have any Leica M mount lenses, but we do have this Voigtlander 28 millimeter and this Seven Artisans 50 millimeter, both of which are M mount. Connect them up and work these two rings like it's 1977 or even 1957. M to Nikon Z. This was our first M mount adapter when, silly us, we were trying to make a Leica Q2 out of a Nikon and a Voigtlander. Don't get me wrong, it actually works great. And then we actually bought a Q2 because we spent money on cameras instead of non-essentials like food and socks and such. Seriously, my car has nearly 200,000 miles on it and I actually have holes in my trail shoes. <laughs> but darned if I don't have a whole family of cameras on that shelf and I love every one. M to Fujifilm X. Again, no X system cameras here that have interchangeable lenses, but when we have the privilege of borrowing them, we're equipped to adapt. Another thing we don't own are Canon EF DSLR lenses, but when we are able to borrow or rent them, we can use them on our Nikon Z cameras with this adapter. And this one does allow you to control exposure from the camera and does autofocus the lenses competently. This is from TechArt, and we did actually give it pretty high marks in the review that we did. One thing I should note, for many lenses and adapter combinations that don't have any electronic interface, if you are using a camera body with in-body image stabilization, you can register lenses with the camera manually in the menus. This will keep the camera's IBIS working for you since many cameras do allow you to tell the camera what your lens focal length is. This is very important so that the stabilization is applied in the right way to support your field of view. If you have it set wrong, you might see some pretty radical image shifting through the viewfinder, which also undermines the effectiveness of the stabilization itself. Also, since many combinations won't be communicating between lens and camera, you won't have the full set of EXIF data that you're accustomed to. Specifically, you normally won't have the lens name or the aperture in the EXIF data, but you will have the shutter speed, ISO, and the other settings that are from the camera body itself. If that bothers you, I'd encourage you to take a deep breath. Consider the creative possibilities of some unique lens and body combinations and not focus so much on the data itself. And that brings us to this, why? I can't speak for all of you, but for Raymond and I, in the age of mirrorless cameras that from a distance are all very similar, it truly is lenses that can distinguish one from another. And when you can cross over like this, the possibilities are amazing and endless. In this year of calamity, daydreaming and sneaking out safely, we haven't been afraid to be photography rule breakers or give up autofocus for a day or even an entire week just so that we could experiment with lens and body combinations that we felt would unlock some of our own creative potential. These cameras are tools and when we can mix and match them with these lenses, which are also tools, you might find some synergies that weren't really possible or practical in the past. It even feels a little subversive to take a modern mirrorless masterpiece with screens and screens of settings and adjustments and customizations and mount a lens designed decades ago on it. And maybe, just maybe, depending on how that lens uniquely renders light onto that modern sensor, perhaps you can capture some of that magic from days gone by or Maybe that very tangible, old, or even newer lens just causes you to adjust your thinking and your vision. 
Maybe that manual focus slows you down to wait just an extra moment for that perfect scene. Maybe that lens that's been handed down to you from an earlier generation brings some special magic to your images, just as it did for a family member before you were even born. Like no other time frame that I've experienced, 2020 is licensed to be who you want and shoot how you want, even if you end up making a bit of a mess. What we're also seeing and being asked about quite frequently recently is second system shooters where you have that primary system that gets the job done with surgical precision, and then maybe that second lighter load of a different brand that forces you to think a little different. For many of you, that's either been Fujifilm or Leica, where it may or may not be your primary brand, but somehow one or more have ended up on your shelf regardless. Adapters let you steal a bit of magic from one brand and apply them to the other. Like I do quite often, I've put some links in the description below to the various adapters that I have discussed in this video. In fact, because of the prevalence of inexpensive adapters, it's quite a long list, <laughs> but you won't see too many high price tags in those links. The adapters that provide autofocus and or aperture control are always more expensive, but frankly, the ones that simply adapt the form factor of the lens mount to that of the lens, they're very inexpensive and sometimes even more fun. I'll leave those decisions up to you though. Now today's question, what have you done with adapters or what do you want to do? Have you taken an epic lens from past generations and mounted it to a body from last week <laughs> or even the other way around? Let me know down in the comments. And this is where you all can help as a community too. When people do have questions, even though I feel like I have a lot of adapters, there are combinations that I haven't even considered or scratched the surface on. So don't be hesitant to scan down those comments and see if you can help out a curious peer. And as always, please click the like button and subscribe. I post new videos every week on all things photography and sometimes even photography adjacent topics. Thank you for watching.